Let's begin our discussion on the ideal gas law. So what exactly is the ideal gas law? Well, the ideal gas law is a relationship that essentially combines the three individual gas laws. So this gas law, the ideal gas law, combines Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's law into a single equation, into a single relationship. Now before we discuss the actual equation, let's look at the conditions that are required for the ideal gas law to work. So condition number one is the pressure cannot be too high. So why is that? Well, let's examine what happens to our gas system when the pressure is very high. At high pressures, the gas molecules are forced to be very close to one another. And what happens when atoms or molecules are very close to one another is a change of phase takes place. So let's suppose that we begin with a container of gas molecules or atoms that is at one atmospheric pressure. So if we decrease the volume of our system, our container, what happens is the molecules or atoms are brought very close to one another. And let's say if we go from 1 atm to 1000 atmospheric pressure, notice how close our atoms or molecules are because of the proximity of our atoms or molecules a change of phase will take place so the gas has the potential to either liquefy to go from the gas state to the liquid state or solidify to go from the gas state to the solid state and if we're dealing with a liquid or a solid the ideal gas law will no longer apply so let's move on to condition number two. For the same exact reason, the temperature of our gaseous system cannot be very low. So let's recall what happens to a gaseous system when it is brought to a very low temperature. So let's suppose that our system begins at 800 Kelvin and it is brought to 200 Kelvin. So, at low temperatures, the gas molecules or atoms loses its very high kinetic energy. So, it loses its high velocity and it drops down to the bottom of the container. It collects at the bottom of the container because it no longer has the kinetic energy. It no longer has the velocity to move about the entire system. So, it collects at the bottom of the container and now notice once again, the distance between any two adjacent gas molecules or atoms is very small compared to the distance in this case. And because the atoms or molecules are in close proximity, there is potential for the gas to liquefy into the liquid state or for the gas to turn into the solid state. And because at low temperatures we're now dealing with a liquid or solid that means the ideal gas law will not apply so once again we can only use the ideal gas law as long as the pressure is not too high and the temperature is not too low now let's actually move on to the equation for the ideal gas law so the equation looks as follows so essentially if you combine Charles law Boyle's law and Gay-Lussac's law into a single equation, we get the following formula. The product of the pressure and the volume of our gaseous system is equal to the product of the number of moles and uh, the gas constant R and the temperature. So this R is simply our proportionality constant. It's commonly known as the universal gas constant and it's given the units, the value value of 8.314 joules per mole times our degree Kelvin or simply times Kelvins. Now once again the P is simply our absolute pressure. So P is not the gauge pressure. P is the absolute pressure within our gaseous system. So R is our universal gas constant, N is our number of moles, V is our volume, and T is our temperature which is always given in Kelvins. 
So let's discuss what a mole is. So what exactly is a mole? Well, a mole is essentially a unit of measurement that is used for elementary particles such as atoms and molecules. It is equivalent to the number of particles found in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope. And this number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. So in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope, there are this many atoms. And we define one mole to always be this quantity of atoms. So two moles is equal to two times this amount, three moles is equal to three times this amount, and so on. Now, it is sometimes asked to define a standard temperature and pressure. So what exactly is the stem a standard temperature and pressure? Well, the standard temperature is 273 degrees Kelvin or simply Kelvins, which is equivalent to zero degrees Celsius. And the pressure, the standard pressure, is given to be one atmosphere pressure, which is equivalent to 1.013 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to use the ideal gas law to calculate the volume. Calculate the volume of two moles of gas molecules at STP. So STP is simply standard temperature and pressure. So we want to apply this equation and rearrange it and solve for the volume. So volume is equal to the product of these three variables divided by our pressure. So we know what N is. N is two moles. So that means in our gaseous system there are two times this many atoms or molecules. The R is simply our universal gas constant equal to this quantity. The T is our temperature given in Kelvin. So it's 273 Kelvin. And the pressure, well it's 1 atm. But since we're using this value we have to use newtons per meter squared. So we plug in 1.013 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared. So we plug in our values, we multiply and divide, and we get 0 0.0448 meters cubed is the volume of our gaseous system.